The Arizona Dimebacks defeat the Washington Juan Sotos by the score of 10 to 1. Hello there, I am Michael McDermott from the AZ Snake Pit. Here to remind you to subscribe to the AZ Snake Pit YouTube channel as we are going to be bringing back the game recaps. We still have 70 games to go and between now and the end of the season. Kind of just up, uh, catching up the last, uh, well, how many games? Are 50, 50, 58 games. It's been 58 games. And we can blame me for the team's tailspin. The team was above 500 my last recap. Yeah, now they sit at 41 and 52. Try to save some dignity in the dignity in the second half of the season. Anyway, this was a pretty well clean game, uh, well played game, clean across the board. It was pretty evident that the Dimebacks were going to walk away with this one early. Zach Gallon had it going, took a uh, perfect through the first eight, took a no hitter into the uh, sixth inning with two outs before a comebacker to the mound ended up knock. Gallon had trouble feeling a comeback into the mound, ended up resulting in a hit. And then, of course, any doubts about a no hitter was answered when one sort of smashed a single to the through the right side of the infield in the seventh inning, but. Yeah, it was pretty good. It, stuff wasn't jump off the page, but the command was very good. Did a pretty good job of uh, pitching well in sequences. I thought he had a good job of not necessarily chasing, getting hitters to chase, but he had the Nationals down in the count for most of the game. 0-2-1-2. And he was, they were fighting uphill to try and stay in the at-bat. Gallon, who in the past has let some very easy at-bats get out, um extend or even lose the hitter just by jumping ahead he had none of that was happening tonight he was in control every bat for seven innings only one only a couple hard hit balls in that time period I ended up getting seven strikeouts not a lot of swing and miss but a lot of well-placed strikes to put away the washington hitters did a pretty good job of taking care of that on the other side dimebacks had some pretty good bats early on they were making corbin work for every out although they weren't getting a lot of uh Production from the plate. First batter, Carson Kelly, fell behind 0-2 after a really uh, ugly-looking swing at a slider. But then battles back in the count, works the count even, gets a fastball to hit, and hammers it. off. One hop shots it off the left field wall. Hernandez had no chance to try and catch it. Just a desperation leap came up about a couple feet short. And that was the team's only hit through the first three innings. But then the da proverbial dam broke in the third. Perdomo single through the left side. Then a base hit by Kelly. Kelly had three hits against Corbin. I felt really good about that matchup with Carson Kelly against the left-handed pitcher, a tr left handed pitcher with the typical lefty repertoire. Carson Kelly had three very good at bats against Corbin, three for three. Singles up the middle, nice line drive up the middle. There's not enough of those in this lineup. As you can tell by the team's overall hitting statistics. That's nice. Not trying to do too much in the bat. Then after. Doing so, I and then Jordan Luplo coming up, and obviously I've made jokes about Luplo, including uh, comparing him to ice cream. Nobody else will see that text, but uh, it's an inside joke that I have with a few other Snake Pit writers about Jordan Luplo being less valuable than ice cream. But he was valuable today. He ripped a single through the left side, not hit hard, but similar hit to Berdomo, scored a run. I think, and then uh, you tell Marte ended up golfing a off-speed pitch down the way, hits it, hits a. Hits it past the left center field home run porch. It was a well hit, obviously 104 off the bat. Not the hardest hit ball of the game at that point, but pretty nice clean hit. Home run had the uh, launching, ended up going about 423. And uh, that was a big hit the D backs have never really had of late. Big hit to turn a good inning into a great inning. Just get that big, crooked number. And that was definitely a good sight to see. I know Corbin's washed up compared to where he was as a Dimebacks, as an all-star level pitcher for the Dimebacks, but it's good to see them hit the uh, guys they're supposed to light up. I think it's baby steps, obviously. You want, it's like doing what you're supposed to do is a good first step into uh, trying to improve. And of course, improvement may not necessarily show up in the record this second half. Big inning. Dimebacks threatened to score again. Didn't Not much came out of it. But uh, sent eight men to the plate that inning, so definitely good uh, inning to build on. And then the final inning, Dimebacks tacked on another great at bat by Carson Kelly again. 
taking advantage. I think Varsha ended up being a one-out hit, moved up the third. I think he ended up on... Oh, and then I think he moved up the second on ground ball. Ground ball hit by Alcantara. Ground ball is short. There was no play at second. Staying out of that double play. Staying out of the double play ended up proving critical. Of course, this is while I'm getting ice cream at the game. But staying... Having to walk across halfway across the ballpark to get ice cream. Because there's only... One place in Chase Field that serves coffee ice cream. But uh, as I was getting the ice cream, Carson Kelly, nice opposite field hit. And that's kind of where I feel like he's been getting better this year, hitting him where they're not. Because when he struggled, he was pulling ground balls in the shifts, and it was just frustrating. Now he's hitting line drives up the middle the other way. Definitely a good way to... In a runner in scoring position situation, that's definitely a way to break a team. The two out runners in scoring position hit by Kelly. Obviously 5 nothing. you're out of slam range. And at that point, Zach Gallon was threatening to throw a no-hitter. He had been pretty much dominant for the first five innings. A little bit, the... Uh, then in that sixth inning, got the first two outs. And as soon as people started talking about the no-hitter around me, it's like... Shh. That's why we say he's doing the thing. So the one says, the D-backs don't throw a no-hitter, and it's like... Yeah, and misplays a comebacker and it's ruled a single. The jokes aside. So after that, you obviously were a young pitcher, loses a no-hitter. Maybe the, the uh mentally it messes them up, but then three pitches later back in the dugout as uh I forget who the hitter was. I think it was uh oh, I think it was their second place hitter it was I'm trying to remember who. I'm drawing a blank. But it was the guy batting in front of Juan Soto. Well, anyway, next batter rolls over the first base. Easy play for Walker because that guy's winning gold glove this is winning the gold glove this year. But then uh, so then you don't have to worry about a post uh, no hit bid meltdown. That was definitely a key moment, even though the score was five nothing. There was only a runner at first. It's just it, it can snowball. It didn't. That's the important thing. So after that, Nationals go to their bullpen. And the D-backs, obviously, for the first, keep the foot on the gas. Jordan Williams, despite him spraying the ball over the yard, gets first batter out next uh, bat, Dalton Varsho. Long at bat. I think it was, I don't remember if it was the ninth or the tenth pitch of the at bat, but after spoiling three full count pitches on the borderline pitches, fouling him off, gets a fastball in the inter fastball to hit, and he just destroys it. You just know what's going off the bat. 400, 109 miles an hour, 450 feet. You just watch, and then of course watching from third base. It's like, yep. That, and now you're just seeing where the ball lands. You know it's gone. It ended up going all the way, almost all the way to the concourse in right field. The seventh inning, able to tack on after Gallon. You have a hit to Soto. A little bit of a effort to get through that inning, but he got a, punch, a couple of punch outs and ended up uh, working his way out of the inning. Seven innings, seven strikeouts, two hits. Not no national got past first base while he was on the mound. Great, great start for him. That's kind of like something that he hasn't done in a while. In fact, the last time I've seen him to have his quality start. Uh, last time I seen a quality start and a winning effort, I'd probably say the last time I saw Zach Gallon pitch in person, which was uh, Memorial Day, where he got a win and a quality start against the Braves. But after Gallon's start, Ian Kennedy comes. Uh, the D-backs again pounce with another run. In the bottom of the seventh inning. Then more situational hitting. Ketel Marte hits a ball that Juan Soto has trouble getting in the right field corner. So he's able to jog the third base despite the bad hamstring. And then Christian Walker tees up a fastball. And in typical Christian Walker fashion, it's an out. An absolute frozen rope right at the left fielder. It made a really loud sound off the bat. And I'm like, okay, this is going to the corner. Nope. Look up in the right left fielder standing waiting for it. But it's Christian Walker season in a nutshell. He's just not going to have success. He's just not going to have the success he wants. Despite the fact he's hitting the ball hard. Lining up. Sackass actually classified as a barrel. Christian Walker <laughs> probably has the largest percent of barrels for outs. I don't know if it's an actual true statement, but somebody can do the research on that. If you can't, if you know how to do the research on it, put it in the comments. How percentage of barrels that are outs? For each player. Be pretty easy to look up. Just do two searches. Download both. 
and do the math on an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, I digress. So D back score again, they threatened to tack on more, but we're not going to lament lost opportunities. Obviously they took care of Patrick Corbin, obviously. So uh, eighth inning, Ian Kennedy comes in first start uh, appearance since having to be helped off the field with the blood clot in his leg. And the thing I wanted to see when Kennedy on the field was fastball velocity it was down. I expected it to be down. Because obviously it's his leg he pushes off the mound on, so it might not be as strong in that leg, so generating velocity might be an issue. And he was able to spot his fastball decently, and he went to his, uh, he's working on a split grip changeup, got a pair of strike it, swinging strikeouts on that pitch, and got and then uh, a liner in the left field corner that Jordan Lupla flagged down. And it's like, when is the ball is getting into the corner, I'm like, oh, he's got to play on this. He does that. Really n nice catch. Sandwich between two strikeouts in one, two, three inning for Kennedy. You take the good innings that he provides every now and then. So the bottom of the eighth inning, and this is where the game kind of got it. The game blew open right there. So obviously in a blow game, seven, nothing. You don't like pitchers that walk guys. Nationals brought in uh, Victor Rano, and then he was having trouble throwing strikes. In fact, I believe he walked in a run. And the Diamondbacks ended up hit, getting a pair of sack. I think like a two bases loaded walks and a sack fly in that inning. I know, I think someone was driven in with a hit, but three runs in an inning. That inning and uh, pretty cruising from there. And then Edwin said it. Decided to run the shutout. Leadoff batter doubled. Wild pitch in the third. Ground out. But of course, uh, Washington didn't have much more to go with a ground out base hit and another ground out ended up finishing the inning. No, sorry, a fly out to center. Oh, the shutout was ruined in the ninth inning, but uh doesn't matter. They'll take the wins as they come, especially if they're nice, easy blowout wins like today. And that's something the team hasn't done much this year. Getting the pitching, starting pitching, hitting, going. So that way they don't have to squeak out with the bullpen. And then obviously these guys have Back in the bullpen, good or not, whether you consider good or not, are definitely having to pitch a lot of high leverage innings, and it's definitely and those innings are definitely taxing him. So it's nice to see guys like Mantiply not have, you don't have to worry about them pitching in this game. Although I did bring up the idea, but then the, the way the line, Nationals lineup was structured was probably Green Kennedy. I was still somewhat in doubt. Well, I mean, when the D-backs winning probability was less than a hundred. Uh. Game two tomorrow, Madison Bumgarner against Anibal Sanchez. Two washed up pitchers, so it'll probably be a pitcher's. Two washed up pitchers. I haven't really done much of late, so it'll probably be a pitcher's duel. Or d backs offense has struggles to hit. We'll see what happens in that one. So I think on the pitching matchup, obviously Bumgarner is the favorite. Although, like I said, although I'm not necessarily sure what will happen to him. In the upcoming weeks.